Number one is use lotion and sand down those calluses. When I first started climbing, I was getting flappers. That's where like a chunk of your skin gets torn off every other week. When I was growing up and playing on the monkey bars, I got these calluses and it made it so that my hands could handle more. Thought maybe it'd be the same thing with climbing, but it's not. With climbing, any kind of bumps like calluses can actually catch on the climbing holds and tear off, causing those flappers that are oh so painful and totally ruin your climbing session. So what you can do is sand down the calluses so that they're smooth and flat with your skin. And then when it comes to lotion, though you don't want to use lotion right before you start climbing and you want your hands as dry as possible while you're climbing, hence chalk, you do want to use lotion afterwards. So you wash your hands after climbing, get as much chalk off as you can, and then apply lotion. And what this does is it helps your skin improve its elasticity so it can repair itself much faster than if you left it dry after the climbing gym. And there are climbing specific lotions. I've used Climb On, Climb Skin, Rhino Care, uh, both their performance and their recovery, Joshua Tree. And my overall consensus, I will do a video on this. I'll link it right here when it's ready. For recovery, my favorite by far is the Climb On Ridiculous Paste. It feels amazing. Plus it also helps with your tendons and your muscles at the same time as your skin. For preventing issues, I recommend using the Rhino Performance, which you can apply three three times a week before you go to bed. And this just helps your skin get that durability it needs so that it can handle climbing on really hard sessions. Number two is investing in chalk and actually getting a chalk bag. So myself, as well as many other beginners, started climbing with the idea that, oh, I don't need chalk, I'm not that good yet. Well, what I didn't know was not only does chalk help you stay on the holds, it also helps you prevent skin issues. So remember how I mentioned those calluses getting caught on the holds and sliding off and causing those flappers? Well, another cause of those flappers is your skin sticking to the hold. Oftentimes the callus is related, but if you had chalk, it wouldn't stick to the hold because there wouldn't be that sweat grabbing onto the hold. And so it helps prevent flappers as well. So use chalk. And when I first started climbing, I got the cheapest chalk there was. Honestly, that's a preference thing. I have since then tried over 10 different types of chalk. I like a somewhat chunky chalk. I like it to be powder chalk, though recently I have been using liquid chalk and that one's a little bit harder with bouldering because you have to wait for it to dry. If you are going to use liquid chalk, I would recommend the Friction Labs Secret stuff. It dries relatively quickly and it stays on for a really good period of time. When it comes to chalk bag, that really isn't that big of a deal. A lot of people, when they get into bouldering, see everyone else with a bouldering bucket. You can stick both hands in, rub your hands together, take your hands out of the bucket. It stays on the ground. And though I love using the bucket, I more recently have been using waste chalk because when I was using the bucket chalk, sometimes kids would come around and use my chalk while I'm up on the wall. They'd like stick their hands in my bucket of chalk. And my problem with this is I have no idea where those hands have been. I don't know if it's sanitary. I just don't want to worry about it. So now recently I've been wearing a chalk bag around my waist and I don't have to worry about little kids germin up my chalk. <laughs> Number three is to practice your footwork on every single climbing session. Your footwork is going to be the biggest difference as a beginner. Once you start trusting your toes and you're able to pivot appropriately, that's when you're really going to start seeing gains and improve your climbing. You'll be able to level up much faster if you do work on your footwork. So as a beginner, I wish that I had spent time on every single session either doing one drill or one game like quiet feet or just pivoting on every single hold so that I could get used to that footwork because that really is the foundation for all techniques is being able to use your toes appropriately. And if you don't know if you're using your feet correctly, I have made many videos on footwork that I highly recommend any beginner 
really any climber that's interested in leveling up would probably benefit from this. Number four is to give yourself rest days. When I first started bouldering, I loved it so much that I literally bouldered every single day I could. And sometimes like on a Saturday, I would climb twice because it was so much fun and different groups of people wanted to go at different times. I wanted to go by myself so I could work on things. Well, the problem with this is your body needs time to recover. And yes, everyone's able to recognize the sore muscles, but there are two other things when it comes to recovery that you don't always feel is a problem until it's too late. So number one is tendons. Your tendons need more time to recover than your muscles do. And because there are less pain receptors in your tendons, it's harder to recognize the recovery time needed for them. And I actually did a whole mini series with Eric Horst, a incredible climbing coach and esteemed climber himself. Right here, you can go ahead and check that out about the science of your tendons, how much time you need to recover for it, exercises you can do to improve, as well as nutrition that you'll need to have better tendons. In addition to your tendons, there's also your skin. When you're a beginner boulder, your skin hasn't adapted to the needs or the rigorousness of climbing. And so you need to have time, additional time set aside for your skin to recover. Because if you're getting flappers or your hands are just so, your skin is so sore that you can't hold on to a steering wheel while driving home, you probably overdid it during the climbing session. And so the solution for this is to take an extra day of recovery. You can get significant progress in your climbing with just three days of climbing a week four days at most if you make one of those days a little bit more chill or less rigorous. And this will enable your body to get the recovery time it needs while also minimizing loss of any gained muscle strength or skill technique strength that you've been able to build throughout that time. Number five is to click the like button. That sends an indication to YouTube that you like this kind of thing. So even if the videos don't come from me, they might come from other climbers, you get recommendations similar to this video. Number five is everyone starts at a lower climbing grade and that is totally fine. Embrace it and enjoy your time on these high mileage days. Because when I first started bouldering, I was bouldering at a V0. And I was so embarrassed because it was hard. If you're at the climbing gym, no one's going to notice that you're failing at V0s. And if you ask someone for help, in the climbing community, we are actually pretty friendly, especially face to face. And you ask them for help, they'll probably be really friendly and be super nice about it. And if you're embarrassed about falling, don't worry. Either no one noticed because they're too into their own project, or if they did notice, they just remember what it was like when they were climbing V0s, V1s, and recognize that that's just part of the climbing journey. Number six is to pick a pair of shoes that are beginners. They fit well, but they're not super aggressive. There are quite a few videos out there of should you skip a beginner's bouldering shoe and just get a moderate to aggressive downturn. And the truth is, if you don't like wearing climbing shoes to the point where you avoid climbing because the shoes hurt so much, you're not going to get the improvement that you want to really start enjoying climbing. So as a beginner, I definitely recommend getting a neutral shoe, meaning that it's a flat profile. If you want to, you can try a moderate. It forces your foot into a position that's not comfortable. Unfortunately, with climbing shoes, it never is comfortable. You get used to how your foot feels squished into it, but you never get to the point where it's super comfortable. So make sure that your shoes fit well, check out this video for that, and go for that neutral flat profile shoe at first. When you put holes into your beginner shoes, at that point consider getting a moderate to aggressive downturn shoe. My current shoe is considered an aggressive shoe, it's the Mad Rock Drones, but I would actually put it in the moderate because it is aggressive in the angle, but the way that the softness of the shoe allows it to kind of spread out a little bit so it's more moderate when you're actually wearing it. In comparison to La Sportiva Solution shoes, those ones are super aggressive and they're gonna hurt your feet. And when your feet are in pain, you're not going to climb. So just keep that in mind when you're figuring out what shoes you should get as a beginner. Number seven is to activate your hips. 
If you're on YouTube watching videos about bouldering tips, you've probably heard the one where you need to get your hips as close to the wall. That's a great tip. Keep that in mind. I have included it in many of my videos as well. But what you probably haven't heard yet is it's hard to use a muscle that hasn't already been activated. But with your hips, and sometimes people have this problem with their core as well, it's not something that's used to being activated during activities. And so before you start climbing, if you do some dynamic stretching, doing some glute breaks, Bridges or doing some squats and lunges, sideways lunges, anything that starts engaging the muscles around your hips, that's going to make it so that they know they're supposed to be used. So neurologically, your system is ready to be used. So when you're on the climbing wall, it's easier to use your hips because they've already been activated. They've already been warmed up, which may not have otherwise happened if you're just climbing around. And some people who feel like their core isn't activated while they're climbing, if you do some like starfish exercises or leg raises those are a great way of activating your abs when i first started doing this hip activation at the beginning of my climbing sessions i saw immediate gains in the ability to use my hips while climbing so i highly recommend it figure out what hip mobility you need the most and then practice the flexibility and the strength of that part before you start climbing and this doesn't have to take very long. It can just be a couple of squats, a couple of glute bridges, just long enough where your body is ready and knows that it needs to activate those muscles while you're climbing. Tip number eight is to climb as many routes as you can. Get in the mileage as a beginner. When I first started climbing, I spent a significant amount of time researching techniques, researching what kind of things I need to be doing while I'm on the wall where I should have spent more time just climbing. Now, these drills, I highly recommend technique drills as they can be really helpful. But one thing that I didn't realize was you will learn body movement as you climb. So the more routes you do, the more natural technique will become. Instead, what I did as a beginner is I really forced myself into the technique. And though this was great and I have built on that technique significantly, and you should definitely do technique drills and things like that as a beginner, instead of doing it every single climbing session doing technique drills, maybe do one to two thirds of your climbing sessions where you focus on technique. That way you get more climbing mileage, you'll get more body movement, will be more natural to you, and it'll be a lot easier to build up on body movement with your technique so that you can get to those higher grades maybe not faster but definitely with a little bit less struggle than what i had 